Praise the Lord. The Lord has asked me to come and talk to people in healing wings about the God that I know. And the God that I know, I know him in different facets. I'm gonna look at one facet today and maybe next Sunday if there is not enough time. So I have titled this message, The God of the Impossible. The God of the Impossible. Now, my desire is that people in Healing Wings would know for certain the God of the impossible. There are some people that I am convinced already know the God of the impossible. I'm talking as a man. I am convinced that Begay and Dang knows the God of the impossible. You might be surprised that I would say this. I'm convinced that Israel Polete is growing in the knowledge of the God of the impossible. You see it when he leads prayer meetings. But I'm also of the opinion that many of us don't know, really know, the God of the impossible. And that is why he has asked me to come and talk about him. Now, one thing I want you to know about the God of the impossible is that the God of the impossible is a God of contradictions. But because he is a God of the impossible, his contradictions don't contradict. That's really what we're going to be looking at today. Because the God of the impossible will be the God of love, but he will also be the God of wrath. He will be the God that kills. He will also be the God that makes alive. He will, he will be the God that brings down. He will also be the God that raises up. He will bring the God that makes poor. He will also be the God that makes rich. In which case, the God of the impossible will seem to be contradicting himself. But we know from the first commandment, the Lord our God is one. He's not only one God, he is one. In which case, there is no contradiction in him. Now please, no, no, no believer, even, even, even a, 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 a baby Christian, we tell you that God cannot keep a man in good health for two weeks. I would never tell you that. What I'm going to tell you today is that with God, nothing shall be impossible. I will never tell you anything that contradicts scripture. But scripture must be used to interrogate scripture. And how can we understand the God who seems to contradict himself? How do we navigate the contradictions? We access this God by faith. Because if he is not a God of contradiction, he would not be amenable to faith. But he seems to have contradictions so that in the end, the only thing we have to hold on to is our trust in him, is our faith in him. Lean not, says Solomon on your own understanding. So for example, I asked God in my closet in Lagos 
to give me a car. And he asked somebody in Port Harcourt that I had not seen for seven years to send me his car. And that's how I have the car that I'm still driving now, a Toyota RAV4. Nevertheless, I insist in seeming contradiction that a car is not a blessing. A car is not a blessing, but God sent you a car from Port Harcourt. A car is not a blessing. Why do I say that? Well, the scriptures tell me that the blessing of God makes rich. He adds no sorrow with it. A car can add sorrow. A car can be stolen. A car can have an accident. Indeed, a car can kill you. It cannot be a blessing of God. It cannot be a blessing of God. So, when I receive a car from God, and I say a car is not a blessing, that is not a contradiction. That is wisdom that I learned from God, and which is important for you to learn. Isaiah says, sing, O barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Nevertheless, if a barren woman comes to me and asks me to pray for her to have a child, I will pray and God will give her a child. That is not a contradiction. It is wisdom from God because the same scripture says in Exodus, no one shall be barren in your land. Even though in Isaiah, he says the barren should sing. The same scripture has Hannah, who was barren, having children. And he, she declares, even the barren has born seven. Not a contradiction, but it is that every impossibility becomes possible with God. God asked me to pray for Lande to go into politics. And he says, ask her what post she would like. Pray for her and I will give her that post. I did. You are my witnesses. I did. And then months later on, the Bible lesson asked me, should a disciple of Jesus engage in politics? And I say no. I say no, even though God asked me to pray for Lande to go into politics. And when I say no to a valuable lesson, I quoted a scripture, 2 Timothy 2 4. No man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please the one who has chosen him to be a soldier. I was not contradicting myself. I was not contradicting the scriptures. I was applying wisdom from God. And God says, wisdom is the principal thing. You need to get wisdom. That's part of what I have to show you the exercise of wisdom. I prayed that God would make Elijah very wealthy. I prophesied that God would at some time in his lifetime will put one billion naira in Festus de Kera's bank account. Then I told people 
in the midweek service in Healing Wings that the people in Access Bank upset me because they asked me to declare my assets and I had to go to court to do the declaration until I realized that it was God that was behind it. Until I realized that God wanted me to, to know that he had made me a billionaire. I said this to people in the middle of the service. And I said it to them, when we were discussing a topic, which said, God is the God of the poor. The gospel of the kingdom of God is for the poor. That is not a contradiction. That is wisdom that I learned from God and that you need to learn. That's why I'm talking to you this morning. Please let us open our Bibles to Matthew 13. When I was starting my ministry, Jesus shouted into my ear and said, let me read Matthew 13, 13 to 16. But permit me, I'm going to read it today from, from verse 10. Matthew 13, 10. And the disciples came and said to Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you, it has been given, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore, I speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear, and shall not understand. And seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the hearts of these people have grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes have been closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I shall heal them. And then the Lord said to me, but blessed are your eyes for the see and your ears for the hear. If we receive the combination of men, the one of God is greater. If God told me, blessed are your eyes for the see and your ears for the ear, it would be wise for people in healing rooms to listen to what I have to say. If God told Ike, he said, he told him, I want you to listen to this man. It must be because God has given me words to say. If, God ask, if, if I ask God to give a man a car, and he give him, gives him a car. And I ask God to give a woman a job. And she gives her a job. You must know that I have a relationship with God. You must know, you must conclude that I have a special relationship with God. If God uses me to change the blood of a woman, that has a sickle cell and um, anemia, uses me to heal somebody with an issue of blood. You must know, you must conclude that I must have a, a special relationship with God. If God speaks to me through my own lips, then you should know that he has put his words 
in my mouth. You see, the people rejected the contradictions of Jesus because a man told them that they must eat his flesh and drink his blood. And this doesn't make sense. So they left his church and he didn't try to dissuade them. In fact, he turned to his disciples and he said, do you also want to go away? Thank God, they decided to stay. God told me that he provoked the discussion of the last two weeks because there are some things he wants me to tell members of Healing Wings that many of them do not know. So, this is what he has asked me to tell you. That's the message that I have brought today. My prayer is that you would be humble enough to receive the wisdom that God has given me. In this presentation this morning, I'm going to use the very examples that have come up in the discussions of the last two weeks. Because I know, I'm convinced that those examples themselves were inspired by God for this very purpose. So let us go. You see, Jesus appeared to me in a dream. And he appeared to me as a lion of the tribe of Judah. But this lion stood in front of me and he was playing with me. That's a contradiction because the lion doesn't play with the man. Hmm? He was playing with me and I did not know how to deal with it. And then after some time, he showed me his claw. He raised one hand up. And then the claw came out as if some hydraulics brought it out. Huh? And I was thinking, OK, I'm in trouble now. And then he put that claw in my eyeball hmm? and used it to stroke my eyeball. Now, I'm not like my wife. She uses contact lenses. You can't put anything in my eyeball. I can't, you know, I can't, I can't use contact lenses. But he stroked my eyeball. I did not feel anything about it. Now, the message was clear to me. What was he telling me? Like Abraham, God had decided that I should know. I shouldn't be afraid of him because he is my friend. Although he is a lion. Although he can tear me to pieces, but there is a contradiction in this lion. This lion will not hurt me. This lion is my friend. 27 years ago. And he has been my friend since that time. Before then, the Lord spoke to me through my lips. And he said to me, Femi, 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 I've told you before that <laughs> growing up, nobody called me Femi. They called me Bafemi because it, my name is not love me. My name is God loves me. So when God called me Femi, Femi, Femi was an affirmation. Then he said, I have loved you from the foundation of the world. When he told me that, I compared it to what Jesus told God in John 17, 24. Jesus told God, you loved me before the foundation of the world. So I did a comparison, I said, 
God loved Jesus before the foundation of the world, but he loved me from the foundation of the world. An affirmation. God loves me. He then gave me a scripture. Now, the problem I had with the scripture was that the scripture was about Jesus. So I went to him and said, you know, Lord, this scripture is talking about Jesus. He said, no, no, Femi, it's also talking about you. That scripture is Isaiah 49, verses 1 to 3. If you ever read any of my books, you will find that scripture in every single one. I start my book with that scripture. Hmm? If you visit my YouTube channel, you will find that the introductory video channel is me quoting this scripture, Isaiah 49. One, two, three. It says, listen, O coastlands, to me. And take heed, you peoples, from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb. From the matrix of my mother, he has made mention of my name. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver, he has hidden me. And he said to me, you are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. So I'm gonna tell you something outrageous that I concluded from these episodes. Hmm? This is my conclusion. Whatever happens, I will end up in heaven. I'm going to say it again so you will hear me properly. Whatever happens, I will, head up, I will end up in heaven. Whatever happens, I will spend eternity with God. I know that because he has assured me. Since he's loved me from the foundation of the world, he can't stop loving me. He is the Lord. He doesn't change. He says, I am the Lord. I don't change. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not destroyed. Even if I deny God like Peter did Jesus, he will, Jesus will pray for me that my faith will not fail. As a matter of fact, he even assured me of this. What did he do? He gave me Isaiah 41, verse 10. Listen carefully so you can hear what he says. Isaiah 41 says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I joke to people, I said, if you read the Bible and you get to Isaiah 41.10, don't read it. It's my property. It belongs to me. It's a joke. He has given it to me. Hmm? What is the assurance? Whatever happens, God says, I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. That's why I say, whatever happens, I'll be saved. Hmm? So, let me recapitulate. God says he's loved me from the foundation of the world. I am convinced that he cannot stop loving me not possible because he doesn't change and then i read a scripture from paul romans 8 38 to 39 what does it say paul says i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height, 
nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When I read this scripture, I contradicted it. When I read this scripture, in spite of all the assurances that God has given me, I said, no, sin can separate me from the love of God. I said, no, I'm not going to rely on this scripture. Sin, if I'm not careful, will separate me from the love of God. Is that a contradiction? Of course not. Yeah, baby Christian, you think it's a contradiction? It is not a contradiction. So, the Lord says, I need to explain to you the wisdom that he has given me. I need to tell you some things that some of you don't seem to know. I say some obviously know, but some people don't seem to know. Hmm? Some of you know things by what I call the law of conscience. Hmm? Now, I discovered the law of conscience a long time ago. The law of conscience is one where God has written some scriptures in your heart. And you didn't even know when he wrote it. Hmm? Now, those things he has written in your heart, you don't need to read the Bible to come to the understanding of them. They have already been made flesh in you. Many years ago, over 20 years ago, I asked Martins Hille this question. I said, Martins, are there things that you know that you never knew that you know? But one day, you are reading the Bible, and then you found it in the scriptures. You say, wow, okay, so this thing is actually... The Martins was very excited because that was also his experience. And I hope you also have a similar experience because the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus, cleanses us from all sin by writing the scriptures in our heart of hearts. And you know, he said, I've loved you from the foundation of the world. He's been writing this before you knew him. Was writing that I met him in the, at the age of 41. He was writing this before. He's been writing it in your heart from the foundation of the world. Look at Romans 2 14. Romans 2 14. The scripture says, even Gentiles, he's talking about us, who do not have God's written law, show that they know his law when they instinctively obey it, even without having heard it. They demonstrate that God's law is written in their hearts for their own conscience and thoughts, either accused them or tell them they are doing right. Huh? Law of conscience. I had a discussion with, with Begay just last Thursday, and or was it either Thursday or, or Monday? I'm not sure which day, but you know, the issue of the law of conscience came up. Hmm? And so what is the outcome of a law of conscience for me regarding Romans 3, 38 to 39? 
The scripture says, nothing will separate us from the love of God. I agree. I say sin will separate us from the love of God. Some people say I have contradicted myself. I beg to differ. That's why I want to teach you this wisdom. Hmm? As a matter of fact, the Bible says both. The Bible says nothing will separate you from the law of God. And the same Bible says sin will separate you from the love from the love of God. But let us let us systematize it. So let us go. Hmm? Because the Bible is full of these seeming contradictions that are not contradictions at all. Right from the beginning, I call them kingdom dynamics. And every book I write, I title kingdom dynamics. Hmm? Never forget that according to Jesus, the words that are in the Bible, they are spirit and they are life. You see, before you can internalize the scripture that says nothing shall separate you from the love of God, you need to have internalized the scripture that says sin will separate you from the love of God. If you don't do that, you're likely to get into trouble. Let me repeat it so that you hear me. Huh? Before you can internalize the scripture that says nothing shall separate you from the love of God, you must first reach the conclusion that sin will separate you from the love of God. I will demonstrate this to you this morning, but wait a minute. Let me digress for a minute. Last week, I showed you one other so-called contradiction arising from our discussion. Hmm? Must we reconcile ourselves to God or will God reconcile himself to us? Must we reconcile ourselves to God or is it God that will reconcile himself to us sinners? Actually, the Bible says both will happen. And that's the seeming contradiction a bit. It says God reconciled himself to sinners through Christ. Then it says sinners must be reconciled to God. Uh, let me quickly quote them to you. Second Corinthians 5.19, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them. So he dealt, he came down to the level of sinners and interacted with us. Huh? Second Corinthians 5.20, just the next, the next verse. We employ you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Now, that is a contradiction. Hmm? Let's understand it. If Jesus reconciles himself to the world, then we don't have to reconcile ourselves to God. If we must be reconciled to God, then Jesus doesn't have to reconcile himself to us. That is the wisdom of man. When you come to healing wings, you don't come to healing wings for me to give you the wisdom of men. You come to healing wings because we want to learn together. Me learning from you, you learning from me, the wisdom of God. So, how does God resolve this seeming contradiction? It's a God of the impossible. Right? He resolves everything. Because those things that be not as though they were. Huh? Okay? How does he resolve the contradiction that instead of leading you to a place where you can escape from Pharaoh, he leads you to the Red Sea of all places? Huh? doesn't make any sense, except that when you get to that impossible situation, he parts the Red Sea. God of contradiction. Hmm? Parts the Red Sea, and you end up doing the impossible. 
And some foolish armies of Pharaoh think they can do in the same thing, they perish in the same Red Sea. Huh? So the Red Sea that was used to send Israel was used to kill the armies of Egypt. Okay? Now, how do we reconcile this kingdom dynamic? The wisdom of God says, Jesus reconciles himself to the world so that the world can be reconciled to God. Hmm? Okay? Now, with wisdom, I held on to the one that has to do with me, not with Jesus. The one says, Jesus reconciles himself to the world. I said, no, we must be reconciled to God. Wisdom, because that is one that applies to me. You understand? That's the one. I know I have to be reconciled to God. In my reconciliation to God, I have to become the righteousness of God. I have to become righteous like God. No, God is not going to become a sinner like me. Huh? But then Jesus was teaching me about denying self. And I said, he is different from a natural parent who goes through things because he doesn't want his children to go through the same thing. He said, no, that which I went through, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm showing you the way, the truth, and the life that you may follow that path. So Jesus told me, look, Remy, I denied myself. God in heaven became a man. He denied his divinity. He put on the human flesh. Huh? Okay? He said, so for you to understand my righteousness, you've got to deny yourself. Hmm? There are disagreeable people that you need to reconcile yourself to. Not because you agree with them, but because ultimately you want them to know your ways. The first step of it is that you reconcile yourself to them. That's why the book of Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and I sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. But more importantly is verse 3 of that Hebrews 12. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. So what do we have? Jesus endured the hostility of sinners to show them the way of righteousness. So doing, he had to deny himself. And he's calling us to the same. That's what I preached. And some people started to argue. I can't help you beyond that. <laughs> I can't help you. I can't help you beyond that. I can't help you beyond that. Huh? So I said, I would, I'm digressing back to the love of God. So God tells me personally, in all ambiguous terms, that nothing will separate me from his love. But when I read the assurance in Paul, I insisted that sin will separate me from his love. The question is this. Why did God give me the assurance? And he gave it to me again and again and again and again. I pointed it out to you. I have loved you from the foundation of the world. Huh? You know, he gave me again and again and again. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. Again and again and again. What am I supposed to do with the assurance and the reassurance of his unfailing love? Will it not make me complacent? After all, I know that whatever happens, and I'm saying it again, whatever happens, I will be saved. He cannot take back his words. Hmm? Does that not mean I can live 
as I want, I can sin as I want, I can do whatever I want since my salvation is guaranteed. No, it means the exact opposite. Hmm? When I realize that my salvation is guaranteed, you are my witnesses, I drop everything to serve God. When I realize my salvation is guaranteed, I'm a fanatic with God. When he rebukes me, I burst into tears and beg, beg him for forgiveness, even though I know my salvation is guaranteed. Because the law of my conscience tells me something. It says, Femi, 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 don't allow sin to separate you from the love of God. And thereby, another scripture is fulfilled in my life. I love God because he first loved me. The love of God does not make me complacent. The love of God makes me to love God. Uh, let me digress again. I'm still coming, I'm, I'm still coming to, to contextualize what I'm saying. Let me digress again. God told me in 1996, he told me that my Victoria Island shop would make 23,000 Naira in one day. Hmm? At that time, it was only making 7,000 maximum. <laughs> you know, the record was 7,000. He said, hallelujah. He said, it will make 23,000 in one day. So what did I do? Did I relax and I say, wow, God has said, a Victoria Island shop is going to make 23,000 Naira in one day? No. No wisdom in that approach. What did I do? I started working on the shop. I put all kinds of things on the shop, in the shop. I plowed money into the shop because of what God has told me. And when I did this, at a certain point, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Fed me. Because you believe me, and my assistant, NSOBO, did not believe. He said, it's not possible. This, this shop cannot make, cannot, cannot jump on 7,000, I mean, it cannot seem much today, but 1996, <laughs> it was actually a big difference. God says, because you believe me, I'm going to tell you the day that it is going to happen. He said, it will happen on the 29th of December, 1996. I still did not relent. I would put masses of tips. People would say, you are wasting money. I said, that's not your business. <laughs> not your business. This is not this I'm going to do with you. Now, on the 29th of December, 1996, it was the same Ernest Obo who said it is impossible that brought me the statistics. And when he brought me the statistics, I had a problem because it was not 23,000 that it made on the 29th of December, 1996. It made 29,000. Contradiction. Hmm? It made 29,000 instead of 20, 23,000. So I went to God. Father, I thank you, I bless you, but, but you know, but you said 23. And it was 29. What accounts for the discrepancy? Why? And the Lord said, Femi, you exceeded the prophecy. You exceeded the prophecy. I exceeded the prophecy because by the grace of the Almighty, my faith had works. I believed in God. And I acted. I received the love of God when I received the prophecy and I acted. Victoria Land, my Victoria Land shop did not, did not stop at 29,000. It peaked at 54,000 in one day. I made 9 million in Victoria Land shop 
in one year. Now, I just say, most Christians have yet to receive the love of God. You can tell. You can tell. You can tell the difference. Huh? Look, Paul says we are saved by faith. James says, show me your faith, and I will show you my works. Now, there is no contradiction. Let me explain to you. Paul is saying that God saves by your faith. James is not talking about God. He's talking about man. How will a man know you have faith? By your works. Go and read it. He's talking about how you present your, your faith. Hmm? Show me your faith. I will show you my works. Most Christians have not received the love of God. They say they love God. They think they love God. But they don't. Hmm? And then they quote the scripture, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. In that confidence, they continue to sin. Huh? When you continue to sin, it means that scripture does not refer to you. The scripture has no application to you. You hate another scripture. That is in the same Bible. I say sin will separate you from the love of God. Let me digress again because I need to, I need to get you to understand this kingdom dynamics. Huh? So that you don't you don't come here and, and make foolish statements. Hmm? God is a savior of all men. When we discover that God is going to save all men, what do we do? Do we relax and say, well, all men are going to be saved anyway, so we don't even have to preach the gospel to them. Okay, we, we can continue striving in righteousness, but we don't have to preach the gospel because God is going to reach everybody anyway. No. When we discover that God is going to save all men, that is when we start to labor Huh? That is when we start to strive that indeed all men must be saved. Huh? Look at the scripture, 1 Timothy 4.10. Let's contextualize it. First Timothy 4.10. For to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. Now, <laughs> if God is the savior of all men, why do we need to, to labor and suffer reproach for preaching the gospel? Huh? <laughs> Kingdom dynamics. The reason why we labor and suffer reproach is because we trust that God will save everybody. Not because we know that he will not. Huh? When we are convinced that he will save everybody, then as his children, huh, we participate in that process that is going to happen. Hmm? We don't participate, all us will do. I will. That's what I'm doing now. Huh? Take a look at the blunder of a man called Martin Luther. Martin Luther was a Christian. Huh? Martin Luther read Romans, <laughs> Romans 38, 39, that, 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 that says nothing will separate us from the love of God. So what does Martin Luther say? Let me quote him to you. He says, be a sinner. This is a, this is a, Christian, a Christian pastor. Be a sinner and let your sins be strong. But let your faith in Christ be stronger. And rejoice in Christ, who is the victor over sin, death, and this world. This life is not a place where righteousness can exist. Are you listening? 
No sin can separate us from him. Even if we were to kill or commit adultery a thousand times each day. Now, I'm going to read the last, the last part here so you will hear me properly. This is Martin Luther. Martin, Martin Luther. The name church after him, the Lutherans. Hmm? He says, no sin can separate us from Jesus. Even if we were to kill or commit adultery a thousand times each day. There's absolutely no wisdom in this statement. The statement is pure and simply devilish. Your faith in Christ cannot be strong. He said, let your faith, let your sin be much and your faith be, your faith in Christ cannot be strong if you kill and commit adultery a thousand times a day. Rubbish. Hmm? So what do we have here? Martin Luther's voice here is the voice of a stranger. And what comes, if you if you read it, a lot of what he, he writes, he's going to tell you righteous things. But here, his voice is the voice of a stranger. The voice of Peter telling Jesus not to go to Calvary, not to go to the cross, not to die for sins, is the voice of a stranger. So we must be careful. We ourselves must be careful not to speak the voice with the voice of a stranger. Hmm? I'm still digressing. We're still going to come back to the central issue. Huh? You see, when Jesus gives us a definition, don't tell us that we must be careful of our definitions. When Jesus gives us a definition, we must insist on his definition. When he says, beware of the voice of a stranger, we must beware and we must define that voice of a stranger and we must identify it. When he says, beware of a false prophet, we must beware. And Jesus says, beware, beware. Now, Jesus says that his followers will not follow a stranger. And he says, they will not follow a stranger because they do not know the voice of a stranger. Hmm? They will not follow a stranger because they do not know the voice of a stranger. I'm going to hit a contradiction and the kingdom dynamics right there. Because before it can be said that you do not know the voice of a stranger, you must know the voice of a stranger. I'm gonna repeat it so that you can hear me. Before it can be said that you don't know the voice of a stranger, you must know the voice of a stranger. It is only after you have known the voice of a stranger that you stop knowing it. I went through the process as a young believer. After you have known the voice of a stranger, then you will not know it. You don't know the voice of strangers because you can now differentiate it from the voice of the good shepherd. So what is the process? Huh? Telling you from my own <laughs> experience of working with a God who loved me from the foundation of the world. He will unleash the devil on you until you know the voice of a stranger. Once you start recognizing the voice of a stranger, you're on the way to not knowing it. Once you start recognizing the voice of a stranger, you are on the way to differentiating it from the voice of a good shepherd. So, 
There are some things that the devil will teach you. Hmm? There are some things that your sins will teach you. Jeremiah 22 to 19 says, your own wickedness will correct you. Your backslidings will rebuke you. Huh? You will not learn righteousness theoretically. You will learn a lot of righteousness by going into sin. And then you will withdraw from it. Huh? So, God is a dispensational teacher. I hope my English is not, is not too, 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 too much. He operates in dispensations. Before you can have the New Testament, he's going to give you the Old Testament. Hmm? Dispensational. Before he sends Jesus, he will send Elijah. Elijah must come first. Before you know grace, <laughs> you must know the law. Hmm? The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. You can't do it out of sequence. And then you say, they should have known so, so, and so, etc. I said, you know, who, 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 is, who, is, who is learning from you? Who is your teacher? God. Huh? God. There are things that the wisdom of God has determined. Don't argue with it. Because you want to argue with man. Don't waste your time. Isaiah 26 verse 10. Let grace be shown to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. Hmm? You're doing it out of sequence. In the land of uprightness, he will deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. Wisdom of God. Wisdom of God in dispensational teaching. Before you can know good, you must know evil. Before you can enter the kingdom of God, you must suffer. And the righteousness of God takes you from faith to faith, from glory to glory. It doesn't land you immediately. You land, you land in heaven. No. When Peter, when Peter learned that a rich man uh, cannot enter the kingdom, of, cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. He had a crisis of faith. He came to Jesus and says, we left all and followed you. So what are we going to have? What are we going to get? And Jesus told him, he said, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. Who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. He didn't understand this because he didn't. He didn't understand. Jesus knew he wouldn't understand, but that he would, he would stay expecting to get a hundred mothers and brothers and sisters and lands. Huh? When it was time for Peter to collect his inheritance, his hundredfold inheritance, Jesus told him, you're going to have to die for this gospel. Hmm? Told him, you have to die. He said, on that basis, now follow me. Not because of any land that you want to collect. Dispensation attitude. Hmm? John 6, 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. So don't say that we must have known something yesterday because we because we are not on Monday, are not on Friday. I said you are not the teacher. Huh? Don't presume to determine God's teaching schedule. He will tell you something on Monday, and then wait until Friday to cross the T and dot the I. So let's get centered. Paul says. 
nothing shall separate us from the love of God. How can we receive this word from Paul? Jesus gives us a formula. He said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. In which case, huh? because it's from Paul and not from Jesus, we need to see three scriptures that corroborate or two or three scriptures that back up what Paul is saying. Huh? So, where are those witnesses? I'm going to give you five. I'm going to give you five of those witnesses to tell you that what Paul is saying is God's truth. The first one, Lamentations 3.22. Paul says, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Lamentations says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. He's telling you the same thing. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Huh? The same thing is repeated. Isaiah 54 verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. His love is unfailing. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Hmm? He has confirmed it again in that Old Testament scripture. Huh? Psalm 100 verse 5. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God. That's what he's telling you there. Huh? Let me limit it to four so I don't take too much of your time. Huh? Songs of Solomon. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can the floods drown it. So if God loves you, there is no way that he will stop. Hmm? Nothing can stop his love. His unfailing, his steadfast, his everlasting. Huh? So what do you do when you hear that God loves you with an everlasting love. Let me tell you what you do. You make sure that his everlasting love never comes to an end. I'm going to repeat it so that you can hear me because it looks like some of you are hard of hearing. You make sure that his everlasting love does not come to an end. Why? Because no other scripture will tell you that his everlasting love can come to an end. Huh? So let us see how we navigate it. I say, you know, we, 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 we operate in this by the God of the impossible, by faith. Huh? Take a look. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, nor his ears heavy that he cannot hear. For your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So that's a problem because it, it, it looks like sin separates you from God. Huh? Okay? Because, okay, you know, ah, what does the evil? Ah, okay. <laughs> let, let, let us move forward because we're going to do two or three witnesses again. Proverbs 3.3. 3. Proverbs 3.3 3 is, is the most ridiculous of all. It said, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Oh my God. How can the love that is steadfast forsake? Hmm? When it gives you, it gives you this. Huh? It says, let not steadfast love. If it is steadfast, it can't forsake. But he says he can. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. 
write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Hmm? So suddenly, we find that his first first love can actually forsake us. Huh? So, if he can forsake, it has contradict the notion of steadfastness. Let's look again at some other scriptures. Hmm? Deuteronomy 31, 17. My anger shall be aroused against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them. So they will say in that day, have not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us? Now, this, 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 this is important. Let me try and get out of this speech. He says, these evils have come upon us because our God is not among us. Our God is not among us, but nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Huh? My brother, my sister, when you come to Healing Wings, please don't come and establish positions out of ignorance. Huh? Come and ask questions. That's what we do midweek. Huh? Practical Christianity, Bible study. We're asking questions. And iron is sharpening iron. We're asking questions. And everybody is educating everybody else. We're asking questions because there are mysteries to the kingdom of God. Hmm? There are mysteries to the kingdom of God. He says he will not forsake. Huh? Since he will not forsake. Hebrews 13.5. He himself has said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Hebrews 13.5. And yet on the cross, Jesus says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Hmm? The same person that gave the promise in Hebrews 13 5 that he will never leave nor forsake spoke in his humanity and said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And if you don't understand the scriptures, you would query it like, like a Muslim and you say, You see, huh? Jesus was disappointed, he didn't know what was going on. Hmm? The contradiction is not a contradiction. Hmm? Be careful about contradictions when both of them are there in the scriptures. Let me explain it to you. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nevertheless, sin separates us from the love of God. There's no contradiction in the two statements. Hmm? Number one, well, I'm gonna explain it to you in two or three different ways. Number one, God continued to love us. Why were yes sinners? He sent Jesus, okay? <laughs> so, in fact, he came down from heaven because of our sins, all right? Okay, now, when we sin, God's love remains. Our sins don't make God stop loving us. But when we sin, we separate ourselves from God. Our sin separates us from him. God doesn't move away, we move away. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.13, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. 
Huh? God doesn't divorce sinners. Sinners divorce God. Jeremiah 5.25 Your iniquities have turned these things away and your sins have withheld good from you. It's automatic. Huh? But then I'm going to give you even bigger contradictions. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Nevertheless, in the scriptures, God says this, Hosea 9.15, all their wickedness is in Gilgal. For there I hated them. Hmm? Nothing shall separate you from the love of God, Abi. Because of the evil of their deeds, I will drive them from my house. I will love them no more. All their princes are rebellious. Ephraim is stricken. Their root is dried up. They shall bear no fruit. Yes, were they to bear children, I would kill the darlings of their womb. You say, well, this is the Old Testament, you know, Jesus will not do this. I say, huh? <laughs> they're not serious. Huh? Look at Leviticus, Leviticus 26, 30. He says, I will destroy your high places, cut down your incense altars, and cast your carcasses on the lifeless forms of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. Huh? His soul abhors those that nothing shall separate from the love of God. <laughs> oh, my brother, my sister. So, huh? okay, you've got to learn to deal with the contradictions. So, how can you believe that nothing will separate you from the love of God? Before you can internalize the scripture that nothing will separate you from the love of God, you must first identify the contradictions. If you don't know and you don't understand the contradictions, you can't realize the scripture. It will not work in your life. It is not meant for you. The one that is meant for you is a different one. It's not written for you. Hmm? If you don't know the contradiction, you will abuse the scripture. You will take the love of God for granted. You will tell yourself, it doesn't matter what I do. Hmm? Doesn't matter. I'm in good with God. When you take that route, the scripture will not work for you because another scripture, you have been caught. Huh? <laughs> they stumbled at the word. That's what the Bible says. When you take that route, your sin will separate you from the love of God. You will, be, you will stumble because you will discover that Jesus is the savior. Huh? He's the savior, but he is also a stumbling block contradiction. Huh? The Bible says he is a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense to both houses of Israel as a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble. They shall fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. You stumbled at the word because you did not know the contradiction. If you don't know the contradiction, you cannot apply faith because it is a faith and you have that unravels all these contradictions. Because faith refuses to work by sight. Faith ignores the contradictions. Faith knows the contradictions, but is confident of the God of the impossible. Is confident of the power of God to overcome every contradiction. Hmm? Scripture cannot be broken. It's everlasting love. 
will not come to an end. So you need to guard it jealously. Don't take it for granted. Why? Because his everlasting love, huh? his everlasting love can send you into captivity. Hmm? He will send you into captivity because he loves you. He will break your leg because he loves you. He will send arm robbers to shoot you in the leg. <laughs> he will send robbers to shoot you in the leg. He will shoot you in the leg because he loves you. Because he loves you. But you don't want him to do that. You don't want him. You must not allow him to do that to you. You must not allow that to happen to you. You must not allow that to happen to you. Because when he knows that he loves you with everlasting love, huh? you will run after him. You will, you will do everything that he's trying to tell get you to do because he doesn't love like a man. He doesn't love like a natural mother. He heals with stripes. Have you not read the scripture? Whom he loves, he gains. He was sending Israel into captivity. And he told them, he said, I'm sending you into captivity because I love you with an everlasting love. Have you read it in the scriptures? I'm sending you into captivity because I don't want anything to separate you from my love. Let, look, look, we read Jeremiah 29. Huh? But, <laughs> but we don't read it. We only read 29, 11. We don't, we don't read it with verse 10. Come on, show. Huh? We don't read it with verse 10. Jeremiah 29, 10. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, he's sending them to captivity in Babylon for 70 years. I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Why is he sending them to captivity? Because he loves them. Hmm? He's sending them to captivity because he loves them. Because he loves them. Huh? He loves you with an everlasting love. Hmm? You don't have to go to captivity. Or he loves you with an everlasting love. You go to, we go to captivity. Which one do you want? Choose. Choose. Huh? Look, listen to me. Okay? God's everlasting love can kill you. Hmm? And then his everlasting love will bring you back to life. But you would have suffered the agony of death as a result of his everlasting love. Hmm? His everlasting love can kill you, and then will, his everlasting love will forgive you your sins. So you can you have it, you have a choice. His everlasting love can forgive you your sins, or his everlasting love can redeem you from destruction. Which do you prefer? Hmm? You go through this destruction, and you will still realize his everlasting love because he will redeem you from that destruction, or you don't go through it. Hmm? Listen to me. Everything changes when you know who Jesus is. It took me 25 years to know who Jesus is. Huh? You know what happened? After 25 years, suddenly God opened my eyes and I realized that the Jesus, the, the God of the Old Testament, is the same Jesus. Hmm? It's the same Jesus. As the God of the New Testament, He doesn't change. It's the same. He's one. It took Moses 40 years in the wilderness for him to be able to fulfill his ministry. It took Abraham 25 years to have Isaac. David was anointed as king, but he did not become king. He was running, running, running in the bush for years. Abraham had Ishmael on the way. Hmm? 
You can say it was a mistake. I say it was planned. It was appointed. It took me 25 years. And then you can come here and some people say, you know, I knew something yesterday and I didn't know it today and I'm laughing at him. I say, you don't, do you really know this God? Huh? Look, God told Saul, 1 Samuel 15, 3, now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Huh? You know, it was Jesus that was given that instruction. Sick. No, 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 no. Will Jesus kill the nursing infant? He said, you don't kill a nursing infant? You don't think so? Okay, let me show you Jesus telling you that he will kill a nursing infant. Huh? Revelation 2.22. The same Jesus. The God who is love. Have you? Revelation 2.22. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed, says Jesus. Jesus, you have a real letter about you see, Jesus is speaking here. I will cast her into a sick bed. And those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds, I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts. I will kill her children with death. Who is going to kill her children with death? Jesus. Jesus. How can the God who is loved kill babies and nursing infants? That is a contradiction. God says you shall not murder. I have news for you. God kills people. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions every day. Hmm? Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me explain it to you in this way. God kills everybody who lives. He has already pronounced the sentence. You are going to die physically. Hmm? It is God who appoints the day of death. What are you... It, it is by, by car accident or by whatever. It is God that is behind it. Huh? He kills some with death. We, did, we, we, we have that in, in Revelation 2.22. He kills some with sickness. It is God. Hmm? He kills some with accidents. It is God. He kills some with old age. It is God. It is his prerogative. That is why he is God. Huh? The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's the giver of life. He's the taker of life. It is his absolute right. He doesn't have to answer to anybody. He doesn't have to answer to anybody. And you better know huh, that there is no contradiction in the God of love. Zephaniah 1, 12. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will sack Jerusalem with lamps and punish the men who are settled in complacency, who say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. Therefore, their goods shall become booty and their houses a desolation. They shall build houses, but not inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards, but not drink their wine. Hmm? Okay? Don't forget all his benefits, says the psalmist. Don't forget all his benefits. What is the third benefit? He redeems your life from destruction, but he would have destroyed you before redeeming it. And then after he redeems your life from destruction, he will crown it with loving kindness and tender mercies. I don't want to go through the destruction. Hmm? I don't want to go through the destruction. Huh? There were sinners in the time of Noah. Who killed them? God. He brought a flood. Killed everybody but nine people. 
Did God love them? Of course he did. How do I know he loves them? I know because when Jesus died, he went to the grave and preached salvation to them because he went to save them after he had destroyed them. He killed them because he loved them. He destroyed them because he loved them. So we know that his mercy rejoices over his judgment. But he's a God of judgment. Yes, it is his mercy that will endure forever. For there are ages unto ages before forever. Huh? He will kill you. And then he will raise you from the dead. Let me give you a last scripture. He will raise you from the dead. Isaiah 26, 19. Your dead shall live. Together with my dead body, they shall arise. Awake and sing, you who dwell in the dust. For your dew is like the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. Huh? Until the indignation is past. So he loves me. He loves me from the foundation of the world. I don't want no indignation. You don't want no indignation, my brother, my sister. So sin can separate you from the love of God. Don't come here to come and argue with me. Hmm? Let me end with a testimony that I gave. Simple testimony. I said, I gave it to midweek service. I said, I need to give a testimony about the love of God in my life. What was the testimony? I said, God nearly broke my leg. I said, I thank God that he did not break my leg. What did I do? We live on the third and fourth floors of this building. There's a narrow staircase that takes us to our apartment. And it has two light bulbs, one segment, one segment. The light bulb got burnt. One of them got burnt. And I refused. I, I, I didn't change the bulb. I did not change the bulb. And I had four or five of the bulbs in my bedroom, in a locker in my bedroom. I did not change the bulb. And God did not tell me, let me change the bulb. He didn't say anything. I didn't change it. And so you go through the staircase, one part will be dark, and you go to the, you need another second, there will be light. Until this day, I was coming down the staircase, and I didn't know, I missed the stairs because I couldn't see properly, and I, near, the, 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 I, my, I nearly broke my leg. The pain was terrible. And I knew it was the love of God that had, that had, that had, that had arrested me. It was the love of God. Because even if I couldn't change the bulb, God he didn't, he didn't, he didn't tell me anything. He expected me to know. Because there were some things he has written in me. But I should, even if I, if, even if I didn't change it for myself, I should change it because of my wife. And so when I didn't do it, what, 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 you know, one day on the staircase, he nearly broke my leg. I quickly went and changed the bulb, and I confessed. I told Karen, I'm sorry. Hmm? That's the love of God. Hmm? That's the love of God. I said, Father, Lord God Almighty, you could have broken my leg. I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't be able to complain. I wouldn't. But because of your love, you still had mercy on me. Let us pray. Let us pray. We will continue talking about the, 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 the God of the impossible, the God of the impossible. Let's do. Let's, let us just lift up our voice unto the Lord. Just magnify the Lord where you are. Where you are, please. Just give God praise. Give God praise. Just give him praise. Just acknowledge him. And say, Father, Lord God Almighty, I want to thank you. I want to bless you, O oh God. Because nothing must separate me from your love. Tell him, Father, Lord. Sin must not separate me from your love. Your steadfast love must not forsake me. It must not forsake me. It must not forsake me. In the name of Jesus, it must not forsake me. I must remain in the center of your love. I need you to help me. So I don't take your love for granted. I know you love me. I know you love me. Because you love me, I must love you. Because you love me, I must love you. And I can only love you by keeping your commandments. That's the way, that's the way I can love you. If I love you, I will hate evil. If I love you, oh God, I will hate sin. If I love you, oh God, I will cleave to you. If I love you, oh God, my faith will overcome every contradiction. Because even if I'm standing by the, the, the Sea of Galilee, I'm going to trust you to make me walk on water. No contradiction. Even if there is no food on my table, oh God, I'm going to believe in the God of the impossible to contradict that situation and to provide for me. Even though I don't have the money to pay my rent, I don't have the money to pay my school, fee, my children's school fees, I'm going to believe in the God of the impossible. I'm going to look on to the Lord. And he will do it for me. He will do it for me. He will overcome every contradiction. He will scale every mountain. He will cross any ocean because he loves me. He will do it. And Father Lord God Almighty, tell him, tell him, tell him. We will go to, we will go every mile for you. We will be fanatical about you. We will be hot, hot for you, oh God. We will run, run after you and we'll be out of breath. We will cling to you, cling to you, oh God, for dear life. Because if we know that if we leave you, we're in trouble. We will hold on to you. Mighty God. We will hold on to you. Because we know many waters cannot quench the love that you have for us. Oh, Father, Lord God Almighty, we thank you. And we bless you, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Begay and thank. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, church. Please, 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 can you pray for us? Okay. The steadfast love of the Lord never 
His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. O oh Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Our Father and our God, we worship you. Father, we thank you because it is by no coincidence that we are here to hear your words this morning. Daddy, you love us so much. And that is why we are among those that you have chosen to hear these words this morning. Daddy, we cannot thank you enough. We'll say glory be to your name. Father, we join faith this morning to agree that nothing, nothing, and we will let nothing ever separate us from your love. Father, please help us. Give us strength, Lord. Lord, where we are weak, come and be our strength. Amen. Because sometimes we will allow cares of this world and sin to move us away from you, Lord. Father, help us to constantly trace our steps back. Help us to immediately find our way back to you. Thank you for your love. Thank you because, Lord, you will continue to fuel this fire in us. Yeah. You will continue to show us love. You continue to show us mercy. Father, we return all the glory to you. For in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. My brother, thank God. Thank God. Uh, is Israel Polite here? Prince of Israel. Is he here? No, I saw him on them. Okay, I've landed. Landy or Wandy? Hey, Hello, sir. Okay. Please, please, Sorry, please. difficulty with the phone. Yes, sir. Okay, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord and God, we thank you for the message we've heard. Father, we say everything you need to correct in our foundation, please correct them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, help us to obey that which you've taught us today. Help us to live the life that is expected of us in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lambi Atere, please pray for us. Is Lambi here? Again, I saw her on the screen. Nope. Lady is paying taller back. Is paying taller back here? No, oh, no, she's not back, sir. Okay. Okay, Mr. Adeleke, please pray for us. Oh, we thank you. Everlasting King of King, we exalt you. Blessed be your holy name. But our Lord, we thank you because you have been our father. We thank you because you never fail us nor forsake us. 
Father, we thank you because you have loved us from the foundation of the world. Father, we thank you because you have you because you same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, we thank you because you have been our Jehovah healer. You have been our Jehovah protector. You have been our, our, our Jehovah deliverer. Father, it is important because we understand and we know you are our deliverer. In sickness, you deliver us. Oh, Father, we thank you. In times of need, you deliver us. Father, we exalt you. At every point of our life, Father, you are our deliverer. Father, and we know, and we know, and we know. You loved us from the foundation of the world. Father, we appreciate you. Father, we appreciate you. Father, we appreciate you. We know and we believe that nothing will separate us from your love. Even when we fall, your love is still there because it is your love that will rise us up. When we are sick, it is your love that we made sure that we are healed. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus, for each and every single member. Father, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank God, Elbertin. Thank God. If you have a testimony to share, please. Can I see your hand up? You have a testimony you want to share to the glory of God? Let me see your hand. Samukwa. No, it's not Sam, it's Christine. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Good morning, church. I want to thank God for his healing. Um, just last Sunday, I raised a prayer request uh, about the cough I was having that uh, seemed like he was aggravating and all despite treatment. <clears throat> now, that same Sunday, after the service and everything, I was... Uh, downstairs with the children and I just found that I started coughing violently, coughing, coughing, coughing. So I rushed into the restroom to spit and I just spat out this, you know, a big blob of some kind of uh, soft tissue of, of some sort. I just, as the moment I spat that out, I felt relief immediately. And I know it was God's healing touch and I give him all the praise. I thank him completely for it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Christine, let me, let me tell you something. I forgot, you know. God told me last week that, you know, because he has given me this, this message, God of the impossible. Yes, told me last week that the first thing that I should do is to ask you this morning about your cough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I forgot. Gone. Yes. Because he knew, he, knew, he knew it would, it would be done. He knew it would not be there again. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Somebody's hand was up and then it was that. Who was the person? Ran it. The person ran away. Who was that person? That was somebody. Okay, it's one day. Okay, and Daniel. Okay, one day, yes. I know Jumi was taught. Praise one the Lord. Okay, yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I think God loves me. I'm God's favorite son. I don't know about you. I'm the apple of his eye. Um, the process of my coming to the UK was expedited by God. I was just sitting down gingerly in my studio in Lagos. And my sister suggested that we should come as a family. And at first I said, am I going to do my practice? I was going to report to my students, I was going to report to my pianos and everything. But by faith, we started the journey. And now we're here. And I still need to continue to go online. And my, my sister has a piano in the house, but we're not living with her. So I would need to travel to her house to teach on my piano. And God just said, who said you can't get your own piano? <laughs> so we applied. We, I mean, we, we purchased the piano and they were telling us it will be delivered on the 8th of March. And I started teaching from the second day I came here on my sister's piano. They said it will be delivered on the 8th of March. 
And we, we, we look for that. But the delivery was telling us the second day. To cut the long story short, my piano came within two days. Hey, Mandy, Mandy, please, please forgive me for asking you this. How much did this piano cost? 1,100 um, pounds. But it's not a, I, I bought a Clavinova instead because of space. 1,100 okay. pounds. Don't go to me to promise somebody a piano. Uh, okay. Who is in England? You can get, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll talk worry, to you. Don't about worry, it. don't worry, don't worry. It's God that is going to pay for it. So don't worry. I, I, don't. I can. I can, I can talk to you about it. I can advise you. Go on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> that's my stuff. Thank God. Uh -huh. Thank God. And you know, you will not lose students. You can teach them from where you are. You know? you yes, yes. Where you are. Right? You, you will see. God, God, God makes a way. Jumi. Jumi, we can't hear you. Your mic is open, but we can't hear you. Hello. OK, we can hear you now. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, I want to give a testimony about my life. I want to thank God for healing. Um, last month, sometime last, I felt a sharp pain in my, my stomach and I had to go to the hospital. I, uh, they ran some tests and we couldn't find anything. So I was recommended for further tests and I did uh, a scan and the scan came out that I had appendicitis and that um, I needed to go straight to the hospital for checkup. That in fact, that they needed to operate on me immediately. So I went there with Femi and immediately uh, he drove me to the hospital and we went back with the results. So when they saw the result, they said, ah, that this could not wait till morning, that we have to look for a surgeon in any hospital that could accommodate me. So uh, they started to make calls. We tried to reach uh, my HMO and we couldn't get any approvals from them or anything. So they kept on making calls, trying to find um, a hospital for that had a surgeon that could operate on me that night. We eventually found one uh, around the Brahma Dissonia and we got there at past 12 midnight. And I just knew that God was fully involved because from the moment we got there, we had a battle with a nurse who didn't want to save me at all. The doctor was telling us to set up a line for me you know, that at least let them do something, pending the time that the surgeon was going to come. And God just told me that this one is a bad energy, that this nurse needs to stay away from me, you know. So we had a battle with that one. Eventually, the surgeon came around past 3 a.m. And then the, we had the surgery. And at the moment, when we got into the, the um, when I got into the um, operating room and I was injected and that moment, my body just went cold. I felt like I didn't know what they meant by feeling the cold hands of death until that point, you know, and all I was just saying to myself, like all I could say or could do was sing in my mind. And I was just singing to God, arise on healing wings, mm -hmm. sons of righteousness, take away my sorrows, take away my pain. That was all I was just singing throughout. And I was cold and I felt 
God and I felt everything. Then I couldn't move. Nothing was moving. My legs couldn't move. I couldn't move at all. And I knew that, wow, it is real <laughs> to actually die or to actually be paralyzed or to actually be in between life and death, you know? So um, I knew that by the time I opened my eyes, I knew that God had saved me and he had given me another chance at life. So for me, it was a life-changing experience. And after I got out of the hospital, uh, <laughs> two days later, I was back at the hospital with another uh, issue completely, which was I was low on potassium and there was no thorough check before I'd left. And so they had to correct that. And I was not, I could not retain water or food. I could only uh, rely on drips and all. So yeah, and then I was I went through dry fasting because <laughs> there was no water, <laughs> and it got to a point I was hungry for everything, and it was just another experience to know that even like the the meals that I would ordinarily not want to eat, I craved so much for them, but I couldn't have them, you know. So. Um, I thank God for truly healing me and, you know, giving me that life-changing experience. And I really want to thank him and for providing me with resources, support from family, friends, every, everyone, because I couldn't have imagined what would have happened if God didn't provide me with everything I needed to go through the procedure that I needed to go through to get better. So now I'm recovering fine. I'm eating a lot. And in fact, now I'm not choosy about any food. <laughs> I, eat, I, I eat everything. So I'm thankful for, for all of that. So, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is the Lord that heals. You have known the Lord that heals. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Daniel. Praise the Lord. Good morning, sir. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, I want to thank God for his uh, mercies. I want to thank him for his love, unfailing love. Um, um, I traveled for a while, um, for close to two months, and God was with me all the way, you know. I know because it was challenging, and um, in the midst of it, God showed up, you know, and uh, sorted me out in a way that I didn't expect, you know. But, and I thank God that um, everything I went for, even though I didn't achieve them all, but at least I was able to get a better understanding of why I needed to travel. And, and I thank God also for bringing me back for his provisions, you know, especially health-wise and you know, otherwise. I just want to give God um, praise. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Mr. Dinka. Good morning, sir. Good morning, church. Money. Yeah, I want to give thanks to God for the privilege of life. I went through something that shaked me, but I was face to face with death. Hmm. But because of what they said, I am the apple of God's eyes. Every time we finish meeting, I am the apple of God's eyes. God actually demonstrated that to me because God was face to face with me now and they are taking all that belongs to me away. 
it is that day that I realized that life is more important than any material things around us. And I came back out of that experience on earth, on earth to the glory of God. While I was keeping that, the person that was hot in that encounter was discharged yesterday after God. paying close to 1.7 million. Uh -uh. But I was on hot. I want to return the glory to God that indeed I am the apple of God's eyes. Thank you. Oh, thank God, thank God, thank God. It's, 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 it's a terrible ordeal. It's one, it's one of the worst things that can happen to someone when your, your, your home is violated by robbers and somebody points a gun at you. It's, 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 it is terrible, it's terrible. Yeah, me see. Good morning. Good morning. Why did you I'll, run away? I put my hand down. <laughs> I just, I mean, I just wanted to report myself because I had a very bad morning and I was, um, I, 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 I mean, everything you said today, I was saying to God, I, I don't understand all these contradictions. Why don't you make up your mind? One minute, you know, um, you're going to do something, I know, you know. So anyway, I don't want to go into too much details because I don't like to whine, but it just um, felt like the, the someone was an answer to everything that was going on in my mind and the things I was praying about. So that's it. Glory be to God. Who's our chief? Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So uh, I did not want to raise my hand, actually. I told God that, um, okay, if one more person raises their hand, then I'll raise my hand, because I didn't want to talk about what I did and everything, but I will. And I, you know, I have no choice because I really have to thank God. I've spent quite some time a few minutes ago just crying and kneeling down and all that because I was just, it was like the message was for me. I thought the message was not for me when we started this service. I was like, no, 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 this is for somebody else, you know. I know my father and all that, but, you know, the, God was just speaking to me, you know. And what happened was some weeks ago, I did something that God had warned me about. In fact, the thing I did, the only time that God has ever shouted on me, ever, in my life about something was about the thing I did. And I went and I did it again, you know. So, and God had already spoken to me and told me who I am to him, you know, but I still did the same thing over again. And I couldn't understand like myself and what I did. And then immediately, I, like when I did it, God now gave me what he said, um, it's in James 1 verse 22 to 24. He said, be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For be he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straight away forgeteth what manner of man he was. You know, I couldn't, when God gave me that word, I couldn't it was so difficult for me because I, you know i thought oh you know i don't let me not say whether i thought or not the fact is that you know what you are not supposed to do and you still did when you are supposed to know the word so it's like you heard the word you know the word but you went ahead and did what you did anyway so you are just hearing but you're not doing it and he was telling me that you are looking at yourself in the mirror it's like knowing who you are but going and being somebody totally different. It made me so, you know, I, and the funny thing is I didn't cry then at that time. I was just like, God, I'm sorry, you know, forgive me. And you understand now, you know, but he, he really made me cry today. And he really, really, the Holy Spirit just, ah, God, I'm so, I just, I thank God for the word. And I thank God for speaking to me. And I hope that, you know, I will not 
you know, be a disappointment and continue to be what I am not. I hope and pray to God that I'll remember who I am and not just be a hearer, but a doer. Because what we talked about today is very important because sometimes, you know, we just assume that, oh, okay, you are saved and God, you know, he loves you so much, but you have to do it. Actually, you cannot say that because you are saved then that ex you know, you cannot be separated from God with your sins. And it's very easy to fall into. And I and I have a track record of this thing, actually, because it seems like in my history, when God gives me, God will give me a gift sometimes. And immediately that gift comes. I will commit a sin. Just maybe it could be the, that same day. It could be the next few minutes. It, could, it, will, it will just come immediately after that word, you know, and it makes me so sad and disappointed in myself. But I want to thank God. I thank God for his word. I thank God for not giving up on me. I thank God for calling me. And I pray that I will not be a disappointment to God. And that that love that he shows me every day, that he will not be disappointed in me. And I, I, I will not take it for granted. That's just my testimony and my prayer and everything. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Don't, don't, don't go away. Don't go far. Uh, uh, Uzochi, because before, yes, you, before you prayed, God had your prayer. Because he told me that you should take the closing prayer. So I went looking for you. Then I saw that you are not with EK for some reason. So uh, don't go far, because I'm still going to call you. Um, the, 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 today is the last day that we're going to make a collection for, for um, Mama Samuel. The target that I was hoping, we, 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 we collected 395,000 Naira. Well, you know, we will add to it, but you know, but if you have not contributed, today is the last day that I will ask you because I did tell you that we're only going to ask you in February. And I think today or tomorrow is the, is the last day of February. So if you still want to give something for Mama Sama, please send it. Yes, Ruzochi, please, can you close our prayer? And please let us all, please, I beseech you, let us all continue to pray for these people in Ukraine because this 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 evil man must be confounded. Please let us continue to pray for them. The whole world is praying for them. Thank you. Please, Uzochi. Our Father and our God, Most High God, we bless your holy name. Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you, Father, Lord Almighty. We know that you are God. We know that you are the lover of our souls. We respect you, Father, Lord Almighty. We thank you for sharing your word, O oh Lord. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and to even hear your word, Father, Lord Almighty. May your name be glorified and exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord Almighty, we thank you for every single word that you have spoken to us today, Father, Lord Almighty. We thank you for opening our ears of understanding and helping us to listen to your word, Father, Lord Almighty. May your word become life in us, Father, Lord. You said that the words that you speak to us, they are spirits and their life, Father, Lord Almighty. May we not just be hearers of your words, Father, Lord, may, but may we be doers of your words, Amen. understanding every confliction that we think may be, O oh Lord, in your word, understanding every step that you need to take us through, Father, Lord Almighty, acting according to your will and according for your, to your purpose in our Amen. lives, Father, Lord Almighty. Please help us, Almighty God Almighty. We do not know what we are meant to do. We do not understand anything. You are the one that brings understanding into our lives, Father, Lord. Go with us, O oh God. Be with us, Father Lord Almighty. Strengthen us in your word and your truth, Father Lord Almighty. Help us to help others, O oh Lord, to come to know your word and to know your truth, Father Lord Almighty, because at the end of the day, your truth will set us free, O oh Lord Almighty. We depend on you, Almighty and Heavenly Father. We are grateful to you, Father Lord Almighty. As we go into the week ahead, we trust and we believe in you. We know that you will go with us, Father Lord. You guide our steps. You order us, O oh Lord, according to your will, Father Lord. That everything we hear every single day of our lives, according to your word, Father Lord, we shall act in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Lord God Almighty, you know that there is a seemingly war going on, Father Lord, but we are not concerned because we know at the end of the day, you are the one that defends your people, Father Lord. You have shown us, oh Lord, so many times, Father Lord Almighty, that the underdog, Father Lord, is the one at the top.
book, Father Lord. We know that the last will always be the head at the end of the day, Father Lord. So we are not concerned, Father Lord, because we know, Father Lord, that as small as that country may seem against Russia, Father Lord, we know, oh God Almighty, that you are the one that fights battles for everyone, oh God. Amen. So we have faith in you, oh Lord. We are not even concerned at all because we know that at the end of the day, they will come out tops, Father Lord. Amen. You will protect them. You will take care of them. You will Amen. be with them, Father Lord Almighty. You will strengthen them, oh God. Amen. That whatever it is that they are meant to learn through this experience, through you, oh God Almighty, they shall come out victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you, oh Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for who you are, oh Lord. May your name be glorified and exalted in the mighty name of Jesus we amen. have prayed. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Amen and amen. Say to the righteous, you are the apple of God's eye in the name of Jesus.